I'm gonna show you the next step. These are dry on this side, so at least two of them are dry on the front side, so I'm gonna do the back side of it. <clears throat> I'm gonna paint the same symbols on the back side. So these symbols were, what were they again? <laughs> Jog my memory again. So this symbol on the belly is for wisdom. With the four circles with the, um, the shading, like a little oval on the inside. So yeah, that's wisdom. I got a little green paint on there, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is do the same symbols on the back. So, and then on the top, what was the top one? It was loyalty, so it's loyalty and wisdom. So that's loyalty on the top on the head and that's wisdom on the belly. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. <clears throat> on the back of the head, I'm gonna put loyalty. So I'm gonna start off with um, a circle in the middle and the, the charred, charred little charred thing spots on there adds a little character to it, I think. <laughs> Not telling you to do that, but <laughs> it was a happy little accident, as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> so I'll show you each circle as I make it. And there's no rush to finish a piece of artwork. Take your time with it. So there's one circle. So I'm gonna put a circle on the uh, left, I mean the right side, top right hand side of the head. Cause you're gonna end up with five circles all together for this symbol. So, the symbol of loyalty. <laughs> so let's do, so I got that circle in there, we're gonna do another circle. <clears throat> you can use oil paints too if you want it. Oil paints take longer to dry but they work just as well. I just had to use acrylic because it'll take not as much time to dry. So there's the other part. You can make either side the front or the back. It doesn't matter which side you determine to be the front or the back. <clears throat> I enjoy putting uh, two sides on both, having, you know, design on both sides. So you have something to look at on, on both sides. You, know, you can see the symbol on both sides as a reminder. Yeah, you don't have to use a dinker symbols. You can even use a symbols that are connected with your uh, ethnicity, nationality, whatever. Some people may choose to use um, runic symbols on there. You could do that too. So, here we go. Circles aren't perfect, but that's okay. So there's the five circles on there representing uh, loyalty. So now we're gonna do, um, what was it again? <laughs> now we're gonna do, <clears throat> what was that one symbol? Wisdom. <laughs> Hello, I need more wisdom. So it's four circles or four ovals with a uh, shading of uh, ovals on the inside. So that's gonna be challenging. I'm gonna just do it very carefully. The simplest designs can be very hard when you're using paint <laughs> in a toothpick. This is the best way I've been able to do miniature work is by using a pit toothpick and a small amount of paint. So here's one of the circles, or more like an oval shape. I'm gonna make another oval shape right next to it. So here we go. So oval shape right next to it. Now I'm gonna put some oval shapes underneath two so it's four oval shapes all together to make the Adinker symbol for, what is it again? <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom. It's the wisdom one. I noticed that different Adinker symbol charts look different. To some degree, they may have more on there. Maybe that has to do with the region in Africa that they came from. They could have something to do with it. I'm guessing, but I will start learning more about Adinkra too and share some of the history behind it. That's what I want to do. So here's the four circles so far. So just got to put the little ovals in there. A little bit of paint will do it. You don't need to be big because you got to remember that you're working on a small scale. <clears throat> and there we go. That's the other side. So got to let that dry. And now we're going to do, I got paint all over my hand. Oh well, it's a messy job. <laughs> to make sure I get the paint off so I don't get it on to 
the figure. So on this side, we've got the symbol for <clears throat> to sign symbol for patience on the face, which is a heart shape. Then on the belly, it's the uh, symbol for loyalty. So you got patience and loyalty. And then uh, <laughs> lots of patience on the arms and the feet and the legs. <laughs> so I'm gonna carry out that same design on the other side using this mustard colored uh, paint. So, so I'll put, I'm gonna do the head first and put the heart on there. Like I said, either side of these little figures can be, it could be the front or the back, it doesn't matter. You could actually put eyes and things like that on actual facial fi features if you wanted to. Get as elaborate if you, as you want with it. I'm just making it really simple for today just to uh, show you the basics of how to do it. So here's the heart on this side. Pretty cool. Now, let's see, is that simple? Okay. Now I'm gonna put the loyalty sign on it, which is the four circles. So I'm gonna start with a circle in the middle of the, ch of the back, actually this is the other side. Like that, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. But barely, look at how I'm doing, I'm barely touching. Barely touching the surface with this and it takes a lot of concentration. So I'm gonna I put one circle there in the middle. So I'm gonna put one up on top on the right hand side. The symbol of loyalty. Loyalty is a good thing to have. Being loyal to the right things is also a good thing too, to remember. Not being loyal to the wrong things, things that it cause you trouble. So here's the other circle on the other side. I'm going to put the other one up on the left side, so here we go. And I did get a little paint smeared on the side on the arm, that's okay. <laughs> It'll dry and I'll incorporate it into the design of the figure. So I'm going to put two circles on the bottom to make it five circles all together for the symbol of loyalty. So. So yeah, this is so, so relaxing, I swear to you, I swear to your ear, it's, it's peaceful. Taking time out to do something that makes you feel good. So here we go, there's a symbol for loyalty on this side, and the symbol for patience. So what I'm going to do is put the symbol for patience on the arms and the legs now, just like on the other side. <clears throat> so it's just a heart shape. These shapes get easier to, to paint once you do it over and over again. It's just like anything, it's practice, you know? Practice makes perfect. It's like you can't keep creating art and not get better, I wouldn't think. If you're patient, you get better at what you do. So, just take your time with yourself and People get discouraged when they create art a lot of times because they want it to be like some sort of masterpiece. But you just have to be patient with the process. Enjoy the process. When you enjoy the process, the end result will be really nice. So here's the hearts on there. So this is just a, just laying out the paint on their, the basic design. As I keep going on it, I'll get more and more intricate. So let's see. So there we go, there's a heart on that on that leg towards the foot area. We'll put another heart on the other side. Hope you guys are enjoying your day today. And you're able to take time out to do things like this. Allow yourself to relax and create art. Okay, there we go. All done. Now this guy is going to dry on the other side. Let me see if the other guys are ready to be painted. If they're dry enough. As you can tell, if they're dry enough. Okay, this one seems to be dry enough. So I'm going to paint the other side. I'm just going to do the hearts for loyalty on the head, the stomach, 
the legs and the arms. So I'm going to do the hearts on the other side, on the back of this figure, on the head, the arms, the chest area, and the legs. But on this side it will be the back, the back of the head, back of the arms, and the back of the legs. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. I need to put blue on there, a lighter color than the mustard color. Because as I said, when you use lighter color clay and you paint on it, you want to use a darker colored paint so it'll stick out, stand out. It's just common sense, really. So here we go. I'm going to put the heart on the head, back of the head here. Things are starting to get a little noisy in the neighborhood a little bit, but not much. So here we go. It's coming along good. I like this color blue. Blue is a very healing color. I love it. I love blue. I like all kinds of colors. My favorite colors are black and red. Black, the color of the, all the colors of the rainbow is what black is. Red, to me, symbolizes love, so. And also, uh, fiery energy, passion. Lust for life. <laughs> well, not lust for life, but a how would you say it? Passion for life? That inner fire for life? <laughs> so anyway, there's the heart there on the head there. Now we're going to put the heart, some hearts on the ar on the chest, the arms, and the legs. So. You know, you can learn how to draw shapes, um, make shapes, simple shapes like this. Some people have a hard time with doing simple shapes. What you can do is just practice by drawing them. Just drawing them on regular paper. And before you know it, it'll be easy to actually paint them. That's how I started off, with drawing, you know, squares, triangles, circles, uh, hearts, what have you. So, but on here, as you see, it's not really perfect, and it doesn't have to be. I kind of like the crudeness of uh, the hearts on there. And the designs that I did on the other figures, too, as well. So let's see. I'm going to put a heart on the other arm now. That's what I'm doing. Keep you up to date of what I'm doing here. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see. This blue is so intense. Royal blue. Somebody, some people equate blue with being, uh, representing and symbolizing um, healing. Royal blue sometimes can be symbolized by um, spirituality, actually. Depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> so, uh, so we've got two hearts on the either, either sleeve, <laughs> either arm. So now we're going to hit up the legs. People, um, people love to create art. It makes them happy. People love to look at art. It makes them happy. Um, a lot of people think, well, you can't make art unless it's uh, functional. I don't think so. I think, well, it depends on what your definition of functional is. Like a painting. People are like, oh, it's a nice painting, but you can't really do anything with it. Yes, you can. You can heal yourself with it. If it's a beautiful painting and you look at it and it makes you feel good, then it's serving a purpose and serving a function. The function is to um, make you feel good. <laughs> Art's healing. It doesn't have to have gadgets and a pronounced function in order to be useful and valuable to the person who who puts it up on their wall or whatever. Um, I do like making functional art as well. I make both. I make paintings, drawings, um, and art that's functional, like these keychain little buddy dolls, psychedelic looking dolls. <laughs> so here's the hearts on the legs. I can turn it around here. Hearts on the legs there. So now I'm going to do the back area here. Put a heart on the back. Yeah, um, this is definitely something that kids can do, you know, with parents and parental supervision. The older a kid is, the less parental supervision they need to make these little clay um, sculptures, figures. 
I looked into getting clay um, to actually, you know, bake and stuff. When my son really got into uh, sculpting with clay Play-Doh, he would sculpt with that for hours, and he would be kind of upset <clears throat> that he couldn't keep the sculpture because it was Play-Doh. So I looked into getting regular clay, molding clay, and I found it and was like, wow, okay. Then I thought, well, how am I going to bake it? And then I figured out I can use the extra toaster oven, so that's what I did. So here we go. Here's the other side of this one, and I'm going to let this one dry now. So I'm going to check this one out, see if this one's dry. It looks like it's still wet, but it's dry. So I'm going to do the other side of this one. So the, the head part has the heart for, um, for patients. I'm going to put the heart on there for patients on there. This will help people too, to be more patient. Just looking at things, symbols, can invoke a feeling, can invoke emotion, can make you feel a certain way. Either make you feel really good or make you feel not so good. <laughs> so pick your symbols wisely and know what symbols you're picking. That way you're not picking something that's offensive to someone else or, or just not the right symbol for you, you know? So here's the, uh, oh shit. Here's the heart for patience on the other side here. Get her a little closer there. And now I'm gonna do, what was the symbol again? Unity. And that one is not easy to do. <laughs> I'm gonna pick a hard one. You see Unity on there? It's on the far right. You're right. <laughs> Unity right there. Okay. Looks like two beans is what I've been seeing. <laughs> When I, when I have a hard time figuring out what a shape is, I try to, sometimes it can look like some type of food or item. So if I think of it that way, then it becomes easier to paint. So now I'm gonna put the unity symbol on there. Do the best I can. One of his arms are missing. <laughs> so it goes inward, inward, and then out. You know, and the more relaxed you are when you do this kind of work, the better. Because if you're not relaxed, you may not want to do some. <laughs> Unless it can make you feel relaxed, though. Because it's like you don't want to, like, hastily move fast through it. You want to go at a steady and even pace and relaxed pace. But yet, delicate pace, because I'm trying not to get paint all over the place. It's inevitable you're gonna get splotches here and there, but it goes so far. So like I said, this is just the groundwork I'm putting down on there. This isn't the final piece. So yeah, just take your time with it. And then it gets easier. I'm sure this unity symbol will get easier for me the more that I do it. <laughs> I just don't do it all the time, so. Actually, this is the first time I'd made this symbol, actually. So, actually, actually. <laughs> so, here we go. It'll be good enough. Um, and then, once I come in with rhinestones and stuff, I can define the shapes that are on there a lot better. Because this one's looking kind of a little bit wonky, but not too bad. But that's what it looks like so far, the unity symbol on there. And now I'm going to do what's on the other side. I'm starting to do hearts on the uh, on the legs because one of the arms is missing on this, this poor little guy that I'm going to glue on. <laughs> See, this is real life. Sometimes things don't turn out exactly the way you thought they would. That's how art is really though for me. You know, as I'm working along, I have this idea of how it's going to turn out, but it's not always going to turn out that way. You just gotta roll with it, you know? So, yeah. There, it's not too thick there, but it's okay. Once people get not so afraid to work with clay and paint, <clears throat> it's fun, you know, you just have fun with it. You don't have to take a class to work with paint or clay. You can, it helps you learn the basics, but you can learn the basics on your own. It's just all a matter of decision of what you want to choose <coughs> and what manner you want to learn. Some people do better with learning on their own, <coughs> teaching themselves, learning through trial and error instead of in a classroom setting. So 
It's just a personal choice. It depends on what you want to do. You can always take art. You can always take sculpting classes if you wanted to, like I was saying. So I think I've got the hearts on this side, just about down. Might even put a heart <coughs> on the <coughs> on his uh, right arm. I keep calling them he. I guess these are a bunch of male ones. So we go. Yeah, I've been known for making a lot of goddess figures, so let's even it up here. <laughs> Give you a little god, some little god figures. <coughs> it's really looking totally like archaeological dig type of sculptures, minus the bright, flashy colors. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let this this dry, and then I'll come in with the rhinestones on all of those. Oh, there's one more. The little guy. This is the little one. <laughs> so I can show it to you without holding. Without dropping it, but that's the little one. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side I do with the little one. I'm gonna put a heart on the head and then I'm gonna put a heart on the back. So here we go. For patience, right? Patience? <laughs> I think there's all kinds of art out there, including writing. And this woman, Lady of Fire Poetry, she has some really good poetry. I've listened to some of her, uh, some of her writing. It, it just, it's very profound. She has also has a YouTube page too. So, okay. So that's how this heart looks right here. I'm gonna put a heart on the back now. Like I said, I was gonna do. So, heart on the back. I'm trying to make the heart a little small because I really like the swirly pattern on the back here. So, I'm trying not to cover that up too much with the, with the hearts on there. One heart, I mean, on the back here. It could be the back or the front, like I said. It could be on either side. So this heart's gotten a little weird, but, <laughs> but that's what it looks like on the back. So I'm going to let these dry, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like with the rhinestones when I put the rhinestones onto it. I'll bring it to life, and then I'll add the uh, wire and the jump rings and the keychain onto it. So yeah, it's quite, it's quite a journey creating art, especially like this, but it's worth it. It's worth the adventure. So yeah, I'll probably work more on this tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, uh, Lady Fire of Poetry. Thank you so much for your donation to my Patreon channel. I really appreciate it, and look forward to <coughs> me sending you one of these uh, keychains as a gift, as a free gift. I do that for the free giveaway for my Patreon. I'll give out a... Uh, um, a free item of artwork to you. What you have to do is send me your Lady of Fire Poetry, send me your email address, and within the email address, enclose your <coughs> your name and your address, and then I can send you the keychain once it is completed. So I will give you an update, uh, continue with this tutorial uh, after everything dries. So yeah, let me show you what it looks like so far. So good. Let me bring the camera over to it this out a little bit and then bring it down onto the <laughs> so anyway here let's go this way and the camera's running out so perfect I will come back later after these dry and show you what they look like when I put the rhinestones on alrighty guys see you soon